Okay, let's uh let's do a little bending example. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> All right, so let's look at a beam here. Um, and this beam, we if we look at it, we know the size of the face here. So we know we could calculate I. It's giving us a maximum stress on each side of our neutral axis here. So we just look at that to get a sense of what we know. Um, we want to find the moment around our neutral axis. Okay, so we're going to pretend for a minute that I didn't give you uh, a nice little formula to find that moment. Uh, and let's think about how we would do that. So this is your first question. And what it's asking is, if we wanted to figure out the moment mathematically, um, what would we do here? I'll give you a moment to think about that. All right, so how do we find the moment here? We're gonna find our resultant force, which is represented by this dark arrow here. And then we wanna find the distance of that resultant force from our axis, right? This is just the same thing that we would have done in something like a statics problem, um, when we had a distributed force in a statics problem. And so to find our resultant force, we're finding the force under this triangular wedge, right? Okay, so we're gonna, just like we would with a, you know, we wanna find the area of this triangle and multiply it by our width. So the area of our triangle is a half times six times two, and then multiply it by the width, which is six inches. So that gives us our resultant force. That's how much force is on one side of our neutral axis. And then we want to figure out what the moment around that neutral axis is. So we're going to find the lever arm here, uh, which is our four inches, uh, because we know uh, that that resultant force is, um, is applied at two thirds of the way down the length of our triangle, right? So two thirds of this six inches is four inches. Again, this is all stuff from statics. If you're wondering where, where are these numbers coming from? I'm just figuring out what the force is on this half of the wood and where that resultant force is being applied. Then I can solve that as a torque problem. Now we have a force, we have a lever arm, and so the second question is, what is the torque created uh, by the two resultant forces? That is, by this guy and by this guy. So take a second and pause. Uh, and figure that one out. And moving on. All right, so now we're gonna double check that answer. So the answer for the previous one should have been those 36 kilonewtons uh, times four inches, right? So that would give you a newton inches, kilonewtons inches um, torque. That would be just one side, and so we would wanna double that because we have identical sides. So by symmetry, we only have to do the calculation once uh, and then just double it. So now let's double check that answer with our flexor formula. Uh, and to do that, we're gonna need to know our moment of inertia. Uh, and so see if you can figure out which of these equations would get us the correct moment of inertia. And you can pause here to do that. And now we can solve for our moment. So here's our flexure formula. This is uh, our equation rearranged to find moment, right? So now we know, we're told our maximum stress, we know I, we know C. 
C is the maximum distance between the neutral surface and uh, any part of the member. So that's six inches. Um, uh, we're told maximum stress and we calculated I. And the, that was the first uh, version of that uh, on the previous page, answer A. And the reason, if you want to remember which one is B and which is H, H is cubed, right? So that's more important. What matters more if I'm trying to bend this log? Well, it matters more how far away in this direction material is from the axis, right? And so this distance matters a lot more for the bending stresses uh, than this distance does. So in this case, this is B, this is H, uh, and that H is the full length of our, um, of our member. And there we have our moment, okay? And that should match the equation that you had for uh, question two. So you can go back and check that. Um, and hopefully this gives you a better sense uh, that when we talk about an internal moment, uh, it just means a torque around that neutral axis. Okay, those things are different expressions really uh, of the same thing, torque and internal moment. And that's it for this problem.